Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the actor component rotating movement? I've gone ahead, created a quick little example. Let's go ahead and start it and see what we're going to get into. When I hit play, I've got a little cube spinning around its axis point. The, another little cube above it spinning as well. None of these are using any actual scripting. They are using the rotating movement component. So let's go ahead and look at them. Let's pull it up and it's right here. So the rotating movement component can be accessed by using add component, going down to movement, and you find the rotation movement. Now by default, what's going to happen is it's going to rotate on the Z 180 degree axis and it's going to take exactly two seconds to spin around completely. Now the rotating component, these are the only things that are unique to the rotating component. These other sections are all inherited based on its parent class. The actor component, movement component, and things like that. We will briefly cover them, but our primary use is going to be the rotating component section. So let's go ahead and get into that. Now we have our variable section. This is just the name and a few other things. We have the socket section. This shows the parent socket. Then we have the rotating component section. Now by default, this is what's going to happen. Now you have your roll, pitch, and yaw, which is your X, Y, and Z. And basically this is the amount of rotation per second. And keep in mind there's 360 degrees for a complete circle. Now basically this is saying, let's see if we move it over a little bit, give a little more room, and not do that. This is saying that our yaw, or our Z, it's going to rotate about around the Z. And remember the Z is vertical, so it's going to rotate around our vertical pole. If we click on this, let's show it this way. Z is our blue, and it's going to rotate around this up and down section so we get our spinning motion along the Z. It's going to rotate approximately 180 degrees per second. So that's two seconds for 360 degrees. So let's say we wanted to spin along one of the other axes. Let's say the X. And let's say we wanted it to take exactly one second. Well, we would do 360. Now if we run this, we're going to find it spinning 360 degrees in approximately one second. And you can see that top one, one second, two, three, four, and it will continue indefinitely. So this is where you set your rotation. Let's go ahead and set this back, and let's set this to a little bit slower. We're going to take four seconds. Now our next section is the pivot translation. By default, it's going to use the default pivot. And in this case, our pivot is our default scene root, and that's going to be right in the middle. Now, Actually, technically, it's, let's see, I believe our default, yeah, our default scene route is going to be right in the middle. If we were to take our item and reset it, this is where our default scene route is going to be. As you can see, it's dead in the middle, halfway up, right there. So that's going to be our default scene route, and that's where our pivot's going to be. But let's say you wanted to pivot somewhere else. Well, that is what our pivot translation is for. So I know this cube is 100 across by 100 across by 100 tall, which means to get to any edge, I would go 50 units. So if I was to put in a translation of 50 on the X and 50 on the Y, what it's going to do is move the pivot from the middle to one of the corners. And now this will be it rotates around this direction. So if we were to run this, you can now see I've moved the pivot to that point right there. And it's now rotating around that 360 degrees in approximately 4 seconds because I have it set to 90 for the rotation. Now you will notice the cube on the top is spinning as well, but technically it looks like it's almost attached to it. Well, that's because they're both spinning, they're both inheriting the local rotation. By default, when you set up your rotating movement, it's going to find the scene root and it's going to use the scene root as its rotational point. So everything by default is going to rotate around the scene root. Now you can alter that and I'll go ahead and show you how to do that in a minute, but keep that in mind. We're not choosing one of these things to rotate, 
we're rotating the entire blueprint around the scene root. So our next and last one is rotation in local space. This is pretty simple. Are we going to rotate in local or are we going to rotate in world space? For the most part, you're going to want to do local space because you're going to move the entire thing. But you may need to do something special like world space if you're going to use a specific component. Now we have our planar movement here. I'm just going to gloss over this. This is covered in a different video. But basically, you can have it constrained to a certain plane. For the most part, since you're rotating, you're not going to worry too much about this. This would be more for character movement or projectile movement, something like that. But to show it in action, I will constrain. I will tell it to snap to the constraint plane at start, and I will tell it Z. Now you'll notice by default, let's move this up a little bit, I have it off the ground. Now if I tell it to constrain to the Z, that means it's going to restrict the Z movement. It's going to lock it. And if I play, you're going to notice it's going to drop down to its pivot point at z of 0. It's not going to allow z movement up because I've told it to restrict the planar movement to the z plane. And of course you can alter this from the x, y, z to use something like custom. You could have it on the x and the y, x and the z, whatever you choose. We're going to go ahead and shut this off because we're not going to use it. Like I said, for rotation it's not really needed. Movement component. Now here's some of the important ones. Update only if rendered. If this is chick, checked it's not going to apply the rotation if you are not looking at it so that's something to keep in mind auto update tick registration this one and auto register updated component go hand in hand basically like i said by default it registers the component that it should be rotating to the scene root when it starts and it does that right here basically like it says registers the root component as the updated component if there's not one currently assigned. And what this does is the tick will run only if there is a component to tick. Basically, if there's only a component to rotate in this case. So by default, it's going to register the root. And then since it has the root, it's going to go ahead and tick and rotate. Now you can get around that by basically doing your own item that you want to rotate. So in your event graph, if you have your actual rotating movement component, you can use the set updated component node. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm setting our cube, our first one, our giant cube, as the new updated component, and I'm doing this in my begin play. What you're going to see happen now is only that cube is rotating. Of course, it's rotating. Let me reset my pivot transformation back to default there we go and now you can see that cube is rotating and the cube above it is not because we are no longer rotating this which rotates the children we're rotating just this cube which means nothing else is rotating attached to this object so that's how you would change the item that is rotating if you want to rotate an individual part and that is useful let's say you have a character and you want a ball or a saw blade or something to rotate around independently of everything else. Well, you can add a rotating component and you can register just that item to rotate and you could have it parented to your character or wherever it's supposed to parent and let it just handle itself. It'll automatically rotate as the other item moves. It'll automatically update as the position of the parent moves. So, and then the last option is options are going to be our tags and auto activate whether it should be on or off if we shut it off and we run it it's not going to do anything until we turn it on so that is our rotating movement component you can add it to any actor it's very handy to as you can see to do code free rotation if you need to do code free rotation if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below